welcome back guys in the last two lectures we have discussed about the http methods in react js now in this video we are going to use the axios http method and we are going to build one small recipes project using the external api if you observe the project here at the top we have navbar with the title react meals and at the center we have three anchor tags with the values home order and contact us if you come into the body section we have some items almost there are c items and at the bottom we have one footer we are going to fetch all these c items using one external api link i will provide the link in the description and also i will show you the link live open google and type public apis and select this first website here you can see these are the list of categories of public websites here select the food and drink in the food and drink category we have to select the the meal db here you can see this is the meal db after selecting this meal db if you scroll down at the bottom we can see that a link with the seafood here you can see the meal db with the category as seafood copy this link and paste it in another tab it will give all the results here you can see these are the api results now we are going to fetch these results in the react js application using the axios method and we will be returning the html content using this api data if you observe the data here we have three items in the every object the first item is item name and the second thing is item image and the third thing is item id now we will make meals application using this external api data if you observe the actual project we have three components navbar component body component and at the bottom we have the footer component in the body component for styling purpose we have to use the bootstrap and we also use bootstrap grid system to place three items for every row here you can see for every row we have three items to implement this we have to add bootstrap grid system in our application first let's create a new react application in the vs code let's go to vs code first here you can see i have created a new project with the name react meals in the react projects folder now we are in the react projects folder first we have to navigate to this react meals folder by writing the command cd react meals now we are in the react meals folder first i will execute this application by using the command npm start it will start executing react application for us you can see here the project executed successfully copy this localhost 3000 link and paste it in the chrome url i'll open another tab here i will paste the localhost 3000 link you can see here this is the default output for any new react application now we have to remove all the default stuff in the app.js component and we will write one simple h1 tag with the project title expand this react meals project folder click on the source folder and select app.js file in this file we have to remove all the default stuff in the div and i will write one simple h1 tag h1 react meals now let's see the output whether all the default stuff has gone or not here you can see all the default stuff has gone now we have to create our first component navbar component in the source folder i will create three new components the first one is navbar component navbar.js and the second is body component body.js and at the last we have to create the footer component
first we will design the navbar component in this i will use the functional component import react from react function navbar followed by the function name parenthesis in this i will return one h1 tag H1. This is navbar. Now we have to export this navbar to use it in app.js component. Export default navbar. Now we have to import this navbar in the app.js component. Import sorry navbar from in the single columns you have to write the file path of the navbar now we have to add this navbar component in the div here you can see it raising an error now bbar the spelling is wrong while exporting the navbar that's why it is raising error again it is raising error navbar is not defined in the functional component we give the spelling wrong that's why it is raising error i will remove a you can see here the error has gone now we will check it in the google chrome here you can see this is navbar the navbar component is created successfully now we have to design this navbar instead of returning the h1 tag i will return one div so we can add multiple tags in the div in this div first i will return one h1 for the title react meals now we will see the output here you can see the output react meals this is in the navbar and this is the above react meals in the app.js component i will remove these react meals in the app.js component you can understand clearly now Here you can see there is no tags in the app app.js component. We have only navbar component placed in the parent component app.js. Now you can see here there is only one text which is from navbar component. Now we have to add the background color to this navbar component and we also have to add the three anchor tags. First I will add the background color. To add the background color we can use the inline styling and we can also use the local styling so there are only four components in this navbar that's why i will use the inline styling here i will use style equal to in the double curly braces i will use the background color color as brown now let's see the output here you can see the brown background color is added successfully now we have to create three anchor tag elements the first one is home order contact us i will create three anchor tag elements home order contact us i have entered control s now let's see the output here you can see the three anchor tags are created now i will add some margin to these anchor tags style equal to in this i will add the margin as 10px and the color as white i will copy the styling and i will add the same styling to the remaining two anchor tags here you can see the navbar component is created successfully now we have to create the body component to create body component first we have to install bootstrap and we have to install the 
Axios library in our application because we are going to fetch the data from the external API. That's why we have to use the HTTP method. So Axios is an external library. That's why we have to import it. For the styling purpose, we have to use the bootstrap. That's why we need to install the bootstrap also. First, I will install the Axios and press Ctrl C in the command prompt. npm install Axios. It will start installing Axios in our application. Here you can see the Axios package installed successfully. Now we need to install the bootstrap. npm install bootstrap. Press enter. Here you can see the bootstrap package is also installed successfully. Now we need to restart the application because we have installed external packages. npm start. Press enter. You can see here the application restarted successfully. Now we have to import the Axios library and the bootstrap library in the body.js component. First we have to create the functional component in the body.js file. Import react from the single columns you have to write react and we need to create the functional component function body in this I will return one div I will return one h1 tag this is body component now we have to export it export default body now we need to import this body component in the app.js Import body from body. I will place this body component in the div. Here we got an error. Expected an assignment or function call and instead saw an expression in the body.js component. We got an error. Let's see this. Here we forgot to add the return statement, that's why it is raising error. In the functional component definition, we have to add return. Now we will see. Here you can see the error has gone. Now let's check the output. I'll refresh the page. Here you can see the body component is added successfully. Now we have to design the body component. First we will fetch the data from the external API link. In the next video, we will see how to face the data from external API link using the Axios method and in the next video only we will design the entire body component. Thank you. Welcome back guys. In the last lecture, we have designed the Nowbar component. Now in this video, we are going to face the data from the REST API means the meals API and we are going to design the body component. First, we have to fetch this API data using the Axios method. So to use Axios method, first we have to import the Axios in the body component. Import Axios from in the single colons, we have to write the Axios. After importing, first we have to check whether the Axios method is fetching the data or not. So with the help of use effect hook, we can get the data whenever the page is load, loaded. Because use effect method is the lifecycle method in the functional component. We need not to call that method. It will execute automatically whenever the component is rendered. That's why we will use the use effect method. And in that use effect method only we will implement the Axios HTTP method. In the body component, first I will use the use effect. This use effect method takes the arrow function as the parameter. After closing these curly braces, we have to write comma and the empty array. This is the syntax of use effect function. Before using the use effect or any use state hook, we have to import it in the import statement. Import react comma in the curly braces, we have to import the hooks. Here you can see I have imported the use effect hook as well as use state hook. 
now we are going to use the axios method in the use effect hook axios we are going to get the data that's why we use get in the parenthesis we have to place the rest api link here i will place the link this is the api link you can see here copy this link and paste it in the axios get method i will paste the link in description you can get that and in the axios get method we have two callback functions the first callback function is success method which is called as then and the second callback function is error method which is called as catch first we will write the then method whenever the request is success it will execute the then method this then method takes response as the parameter i will use the arrow symbol now we have to write the statements whenever the api request is successful and i will write the failure method which is called as catch it will also take one parameter which is called as error in this curly braces we have to write the definition whenever the api request is failed first we will write the statements for api successful request whenever the request is successful i want to print the response in the console to check whether it is sending the correct response or not response dot data and if we got any error we have to print the same error in the console that's why i will use the statement console dot log i will simply print the error now we will check whether the api is sending the data successfully or not here you can see the application reloaded successfully now i will open the console to check whether the data is present or not here you can see in the console we got an object if you expand this object we got the data here the array name is meals in this meals array only we have 20 objects in every object we have three properties id meal str meal str meal tom now with the help of map function we are going to loop through this meals array and we are returning the html content first we will import the bootstrap in our application to use the bootstrap grid system i will import bootstrap from in the single columns we have to write bootstrap slash dist slash css slash and here you have to select bootstrap min dot css here you can see this is the link which you have to select if you select this only the bootstrap css classes will work in this component press control s yes. now we will check the bootstrap is imported successfully or not by using one bootstrap button class after the h1 statement i will simply write one button this is bootstrap button for this button i will add the bootstrap class as btn primary class name equal to btn btn primary this is the class for bootstrap buttons now we will check whether it is styling or not here you can see we got the button with the preloaded styling then we can understood that the bootstrap is successfully added in the body.js component now i will remove this both h1 text and bootstrap button in the body component i will remove both the h1 text and the button now we need to create one div with the bootstrap class as row div and here i will name the class name as row class name equal to row control s now in this row we have to add the items by using the columns with the help of map function first i will create one hook and we will store all the api result in that hooks here i will create one hook with the name items items the function which is used to change these items is set items we have to initialize it with u state and initially the array contains empty list that's why i'm using the empty array now after receiving the response from the external api we have to update these items by using the method which is called as set items here the data is present in the response dot data now we have to use this response dot data and we have to update this items array 
after printing the data in console i will simply write set items and in these set items i will write response dot data dot meals because the array name is meals if you observe the console we got the array with the name meals i will show you here you can see if you expand this object the array name is meals that's why i have written response dot data dolls meals now in the items array we have 20 objects now we have to loop through the 20 object and for every object we have to return the html content using the bootstrap columns first i will write the map function here i will write one variable const items list equal to array name here the array name is items items dot map this map function takes the arrow function as parameter sorry in this arrow function we have to pass any one object here i will pass the object name as obj now for every iteration we have to return the bootstrap column in that bootstrap column we have to return three things item name item image item id first i will return the one div i will add the bootstrap column as call md4 means for every row we have to return three columns means three items every row we have 12 columns so for every four columns we have to return one item then we can place three items per every row class name equal to call md4 now in this div we have to return three things the first thing is item name i will return the item name in p tag so to use this obj object we have to use the curly braces i will write obj dot str meal this is the key to get the item name str meal if you expand the object in the console we can see the key which is used for getting item name here to get the item name we have to use the key as str meal to get the item image url link we have to use the str meal thumb now i will use the image tag with the source str meal thumb after returning the item name we have to return image here i will use this src as obj dot str meal thumb and i will add the bootstrap clause as img fluid so it will fit for the div class name img fluid and after the image we have to return the id name of the item here i will return the id in the p tag in this curly braces i will write obj dot str so to get the id name we have to we have the property as id meal we have to use id meal to get the id name obj dot id meal now we have to add these items list in the bootstrap row i will add items list here now we will check whether the items are rendered successfully or not i will open google chrome i will refresh the page here you can see the items got rendered successfully now we have to add some styling to it to get the exact project like this so i will create one body.css style sheet in the source folder body dot css first i will add the margin for every image you can see here the images are stretched that's why we have to use the margin img i will add the margin as 20px 
and I will add the corner radius as not corner radius, border radius 5px and I will add the height as 200px. Now we have to import the style sheet in the body.js component. Import in the single columns, we have to write the file path of the style sheet body.css. Now let's see the output. Here you can see it's looking better. Now we have to add some styling to the paragraph tags. In the body.cs, I will add some styling to the p tags. P and I will add the font style as bold, font weight, I will add bold. Now let's see the output. Here you can see the font weight has added successfully. The images width are very high, that's why I will increase the, not increase, I will decrease the images width. The body.css, I will write the width also, width equal to 200px. Here you can see the width is decreased, now it's looking very good. As of now we have created the navbar component and body component. Now we are left with only one component that is footer component. In the footer component I will add the functional component. This is the footer component. First I will import the react. Import react from in the single columns I will write react. Here I will write function followed by the function name footer parenthesis. Here I will return div with two p tags, paragraph tags. One is for designed and developed by and one is for name. Here I will use first p tag. In that I will write designed and developed by. After this we have to write name. Here I will write my name. We have to export this footer component. Export default footer. After exporting, we have to import that in app dot component and we have to add it in the div. Import footer from dot slash footer. We have to add it after the body component footer followed by the slash followed by the greater symbol. Now let's see the output whether it is added or not. You can see here the footer is added successfully. Now we have to add some background color to this footer. In the actual project we have the background color as brown. Now I will add the background color as blue. Blue or red or something. In the footer I will add style equal to double curly braces background color I will write blue and for the p tags I will write the color property as white color white and I will copy this property and I will apply it for the second paragraph also now let's see the output. Here you can see the footer is added successfully. We have the blue background color and the text color is white. So if you observe the actual project and the developer project, we have only CSS styling difference and the developing part is entirely same. In the actual project, we have the navbar color as some black color and in our developer project, we have the background color as brown. In the body section, the total is same and in the footer we have the background color as blue in the body section in the developing project and in the actual project we have the footer color as brown. So there is only CSS styling difference and remaining entirely same. Thank you.